Ministers want to tell me that I'm scaremongering when I raise concerns about how they're going to use these powers, and of course they wouldn't get rid of these laws. Well, let's have a look at that scaremongering, because I've been tabling PQs to try and understand what's going to happen. Some of these rights that I know all of our constituents care about, like paid annual leave, bathing water quality, the Sharps rules in hospitals, consumer protection from unfair trading, food hygiene legislation, toy safety legislation, surely things that they would want to put beyond the reach of saying to anybody that they might be revoked, that they might be accidentally lost down the back of the ministerial sofa, with the, along with the 800 of these amendments, of, of these regulations that have no ministerial lead, so are quite likely to get lost in that process. And the problem that I have is that ministers are clear that there are some regulations that they are going to revoke, that they are going to keep. So they do know what they want to do with this power that you are going to hand them. They just don't want to be honest about it. Why do they know they want to keep the bird flu regulations, but not maternity leave and paternity yeah, leave? And yeah, I say to the minister, yeah, yeah. she ought to talk to her colleague who wrote back to me very clearly saying that they were reviewing that. And that is where the problem comes with this. You may trust your government colleagues to do the right thing in the same way that you might trust a 17-year-old when you give them the keys to a Porsche <laughs> just to, to polish it. But those of us who've been here and seen governments of different colours with the temptation that comes with ministerial power know the point about taking back control was parliamentary sovereignty.